Hi guys, my name is Kristen. Today I'm going to be sharing the TBR that I have created for the Magical Creatures and Animal Companions readathon with the channel Elliot Brooks. I will link her channel and the video for this readathon announcement down below if you're interested in joining. But essentially, for March, she is running. Essentially, the theme for this readathon is books that contain magical creatures or animal companions, which is so much fun. And then there are a bunch of additional prompts that make up a bingo card and you want to get to kind of to make um, bingo or magic, as she's calling it in this case, using the different prompts for the books that you choose. The added challenge that I had for creating this TBR for the readathon is that I don't buy books. Or I buy some books, but I largely use Overdrive through for the library and the app Scribd to do almost all of my reading. So I not only had to come up with these ideas for books that would fit the prompts, but also find ones that were either available on Scribd or were available at the library essentially immediately or the hold list was only two to three weeks long. So without further ado, I will share the books that I am planning on reading for this readathon. I'm going to get magic on my main, on my kind of goal line with four books, but I have a few backup books in mind uh, just in case I'm not really feeling the others and I want to switch and go for a different line. We'll play it by year. I, I've given myself lots of options, but I'll say I'll start with the four that I'm planning to read. The first book that I'm going to be reading is The Beast Player by Naoko Uehashi. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Feel free to correct me down below if you know how it's pronounced. And this is a translated work from Japanese. This for the magic card, this is going to be taking up my spots sky and Asian as it is based on an Asian culture. This is the first book in a young adult epic fantasy that exists in a world where magical creatures are used in the wars by humans. And our main character, Elin, has the special power of being able to communicate with these creatures. Elin's family is responsible for caring for the sea serpents that, use, that are used to make up the core of the kingdom's army. I think something goes wrong and Elin is able to escape and get away and it's later or after she leaves her home that she discovers she can not only communicate with the sea creatures but also with the flying beasts that are used to make up the guard for the queen. This of course puts Elin into a tense political situation that is probably outside of her depths. It sounds like it has some kind of common typical tropes. I am actually really looking forward to it. It also sounds like it really really looks and delves into the place of animals in society, how animals are treated, how con the connection between humans and animals changes who you are as a person, things like that. So I'm really looking forward to it. This book I am going to be reading on Scribd. So it is available on the Scribd app and I actually like stumbled across it. It was recommended to me before I had even started searching for books. It was just felt like fate. And while I was reading the Scribd description, one of my uh, book club members here recommended that book like while I was in the process. So I think I was just meant to read this book at this time. Same, it sounds perfect and I'm really looking forward to it. So for my bingo card, I'm going to be using this for the prompts sky for the flying creatures as well as Asian as it's set in a Japanese inspired culture. But because of the sea serpents, you could also use it for sea and I believe it is young adult as well. So you could use it for that. The next book that I'm going to be reading for this readathon is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Credo. This has been on my TBR for quite a while. This book is also available on Scribd, so I'm going to be reading it through that app. For my bingo card, I'm going to be using this for the slots sky as there are phoenixes, which is very cool, as well as the LGBTQ slot, which apparently there is an LGBTQ romance in this book. So I'm excited. It is also a young adult, so you could read it for that as well. This takes place in a world ruled by sister warrior queens who ride phoenixes. However, there was a war in the past that split the two sisters or put them on opposite sides. We follow the main character, Veronica, who is a war orphan and desperately wants to become a phoenix rider. I think something happens with her sister as well and she strikes out on her own, 
possibly disguised as a boy to try to become a phoenix rider herself. There are a couple sort of standout taglines in the in the book description that did this for me. And one was that this is very much so a world that is kill or be kill, rule or be ruled, which sounds very fun. And the final end, end line um, of the Goodreads description was, I'll read it here, sometimes the title of queen is given, sometimes it is taken which just sounds amazing this sounds kind of badass i'm really looking forward and it's been on my tbr for a while so i'm excited to finally read it okay the next book that i'm reading for the readathon is going to be into the drowning deep by mira grant this is a fantasy thriller slash horror which is something that is very different for me but i'm kind of excited about it it is actually a book that i have wanted to read in the past i've had it on my tbr for quite a while and just sort of hasn't been top priority. I originally heard about this book on Murphy Napier's channel. She described it as scary, like real mermaid, not sexy mermaids, which was kind of fun. I saw that somebody put this down under the disability category on the Google Doc that was shared by Elle. So I'm hoping that it does have disability representation. That is what I'm using it for in this card, but because it also has mermaids in it, you could also use it for C. And it is an adult fantasy, so you could also use it for adults. This takes place in our own world, I believe, but with the real potential of mermaids. This book takes place seven years after a mockumentary was created that looked into the existence of sea creatures. There is now a new crew that has been kind of assembled. Some are trying to validate their life's work or like the existence of these creatures. Some are glory seekers. Some just want to know the truth. And I believe we follow our main character, Victoria, who is a scientist who just wants to learn the truth of the sister she lost years ago. So I am really excited about this. I haven't read a thriller. I kind of find them terrifying, but I think that it will be enjoyable. I think it'll be really fun and hopefully not too scary. The closest thing that I've read to like real mermaid legend like scary vicious mermaids was to kill a kingdom which was sort of light on that aspect i'll say if it doesn't have disability rep then i will probably have to go for a different uh, bingo card and that's why i have lots of backups the final book that i'm going to be reading for this readathon is fires of vengeance by evan winter this is the second book in the burning trilogy I read the first book, Rage of Dragons, last year with my fantasy book club. This book for me suffered a little bit from the expectation dilemma where I went in with extremely high expectations and was a little bit let down by it. Before I get into what the book is about, I will say that I'm using this book for the um, African card uh, for my bingo and then that will make up my magic line or the bingo line. and. But it all additionally, you could use this for Sky as it has dragons and you could use it for adult as it is an adult fantasy. Oh, actually, I think that you could use this for LGBTQ as well as there are hints of it in the first book. But from what I've heard from someone I know who has read the second book, there is an LGBTQ romance. It's not the main character, but there are side characters in the second book. Um, in an LGBTQ romance. So it could potentially work for that as well. So the first book in this series is The Rage of Dragons, which is, I think has very, people either love it or hate it. The people who love it, love it. This takes place in a society that is definitely uh, segregated into castes. Our character, our main character Tao is in a low, pretty low caste something happens and he decides that he wants to, he wants revenge on a few different people. He's kind of got a list, like Arya, of people that he wants to take down and destroy. I love revenge stories, but what I discovered from reading this book is that I really love intricate scheming plotting revenge stories where you like create this like web of deception and lies and I don't know, like sneakily pull people into situations a la Count of Monte Cristo. And that is not this. Tao's revenge plan is essentially get really good at fighting and fight them. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little bit one note in that sense for me, but I won't get into the, my problems with the Rage of, Rage of Dragons right now. 
Uh, needless to say that it ended up in a place where I was intrigued for the second one, but not necessarily chomping at the bit to read the next book. So this seemed like a great opportunity. Another member from my book club did go on to read the second one and she said that it was really great and that she actually liked it much better than the first book. I'm very interested to see if I will like it better than the first book and maybe if I go into the second book with more moderate expectations, I, I will enjoy it even more. I forgot to say for the last book as well, but both Into the Drowning Deep and Fires of Vengeance, I will be reading through the library using my Overdrive app. So those are all of the four that I plan to read. And if I read all four and they fulfill all of those categories, I will get magic, which I'm very excited about. But just in case I'm not really feeling a book once I get into it, or if one of them turns out not to have a category that I thought that it was going to have for my prompts, I have a few backups. So I will just quickly list them off now. My first backup is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This fulfills the category or the prompt South American. I have seen this book all over booktube, but I actually haven't heard that much about it. I've heard that the world building is really amazing, but that some people want more. Um, and I essentially have just heard only good things about it, but I don't know too much about the plot. This book is available through my library on the Overdrive app. So if I need to switch bingo, or if I need to switch lines for the bingo, I couldn't pick this one up easily. And it's on my TBR anyway. My next backup is The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden, which is the third book in the Winter Night trilogy. I read The Bear and the Nightingale over Christmas. I read The Girl in the Tower just this week, and oh my god, I loved it, but I'll talk about that in my wrap up. So this one would count for young adults. It would count for land, as the companion is a horse. It would also count for European as well. So I have so a backup for that, for any of those categories, for a couple different bingo cards or magic lines that are sort of my backup magic lines to get to get magic or bingo. Just in case I'm not really feeling Fires of Vengeance specifically, I have given myself a backup for the African prompt, and that is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This book is available on Scribd as well, so I would be able to read it whenever. I am not too sure what the animal companion or magical creature is in this book. I haven't heard anything about that, but I saw it on the list for uh, on the Google Doc, so I'm hoping that there are also animal creatures in it, or animal companions or magical creatures in it, and this would also work for the young adult category as well. Finally, my last backup, and it's sort of a book that I'm probably going to read anyway. I just am not certain if I'm going to be able to get it, and that is Flamefall by Rosaria Munda. This is the second book in the Aurelian cycle, the first of which is Fireborn, which was one of my favorite books from last year. Essentially, it is coming out at the end of March. I don't remember the date off the top of my head, so I will put it here. This is all banking on the fact that my library will purchase an e-copy or hopefully several e-copies. So if that doesn't happen, then I will maybe reread the first one, Fireborn, because I absolutely loved it and I was hoping to reread it before Flamefall. Anyway, this is a political fantasy involving dragons, but this would work for the young adult category, Sky, because of the dragons. It also, the second book has an LGBTQ character in it, I believe, as well, and it is European based. So a few different categories or prompts that it could work for you. Anyway, so those are the books that I am planning to read, as well as my backups for the Magical Creatures and Animal Companion Readathon. I am really excited. I'm really looking forward to this. As I said, I've never participated in a readathon before, so I can't wait to see what everyone else is reading. My TBR is definitely a lot longer um, than it was before this. I have now heard about so many books that I'm really excited to read, not only this month, but also in the future I can hopefully get to. That's it for today. Stay tuned. Later this week, I'm going to be posting my additional TBR for the rest of the month of March. So you can stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to find out when I post new videos. Have a great day, guys. Bye.